Welcome everybody to the Wukong Ultimate Build Guide. We're going to be optimizing for damage, tower killing, minion killing, prime killing, raptor killing. We're going to just be stacking bodies in this bitch because Wukong is an absolute beast at killing things. And I hope this build can allow you to have the same amount of fun that I've been having with this character. Stay tuned, it's going to be a great video. Hey everybody, it's your boy Snyder1 with Snyder Elite Gaming bringing you a Wukong build guide. Now, I know that the Wukong hype has died down a bit and good, I'm, I'm very, very happy about that because it allows us to finally get to scavenge around and see what kind of builds are out there and kind of see what Wukong is all about. What is he capable of? Now, if you're new to uh, my kind of builds, I build all my characters relatively the same. I start by looking at different builds that are on uh, third-party sites. I look at builds that are in the forums and see what people are saying about them, Hey, what works, what doesn't work, um, and really focus in on the, the do's and the don'ts. Then I go onto the third-party sites and I look at how many towers are people taking, how many minions are people killing, how many deaths are people having, what's the win percentage, stuff like that, and trying to see what I can associate with builds and what I can associate with player errors by looking at um, replays, looking at all kinds of things. So after I look at that stuff, like the, the user-based error um, builds, then I go into crunching the numbers. I do the scientific method, I break down all the math per stat, um, per the kit, and really see uh, what the character's theoretical potential is. And I do this now, instead of by hand, I do it by uh, using Google Sheets um, or my Excel document that I got from my buddy um, that optimizes all the stats via CP for me. So I don't got to uh, dive too much into um, all the math. It, it kind of breaks it all down for me. So with that being said, uh, the, the CP for this build is 23 CP of power, 13 CP of attack speed, and 19 CP of crit. Um, Obviously, your early game is going to be building power and attack speed early because that's what's going to allow you to have the, the most growth um, between zero CP, uh, your 3 CP and your 37 CP mark. At 37 CP, you want to make that transition to your crit build. Um, now, when you use those numbers, all you got to do is look at your, your upgrade, your one upgrade card, and see what the ratio is, the 1 CP to the stat value. And then you build all the CP in the right cards, and the moment you hit all those wickets, whatever, however you optimized it, um, you can start building utility, um, life steal, whatever you really want after that. Now, this build it is very, very simple. It uses cards that you fairly starter decks mostly have, um, just because I find that it's easier to cater to the the um, the newer. The, the newer guys in the game with those kind of builds, but obviously you can optimize those CP points the way that you want to. Um, I used two Spear of the Rift Hunters, one Blade of Agora, one Whirling Wand, a uh, Assassin's Ward, and a Blade of Agora. Um, I will be going over each individual card. I will also post each individual card at the end of the video, um, as well as the, the Tower minion count and overall uh, KDA of this match that you're currently watching. Um, I believe that Wukong is a speed pusher. He is all about split pushing and taking objectives and he does it in such a fashion that it's just remarkable. Um, he's, he could just take everything. Um, if you can look at what's happening now on your screen, um, I'm, I, I barely got to the tower right now. I'm at level 10 and I've already taken this with only three minions. And I'm taking most of it, and I'm going to get away. Um, or at least I'm going to get back to the base, and I'm pretty sure that the Kalari ults onto me. Um, but for the most part, you can see uh, what 25 CP in attack speed and power can really do um, for this build um, as far as taking things. Um, it was fairly easy to take uh, that, that tower. So um, with that being said, the, the cards inside those cards are 
Spear of the Rift Hunter has all three point crit cards, so all major wounds. The second Spear of the Rift Hunter has a three point power and then two two point wounds. My Assassin's Ward has all lifesteal one points. My Blade of Agora has all one point power. My Whirling Wand has all major kinetics. And my Wind Carver Blade has all uh, has two three point power cards and one two point power card. Um, that'll equal out to 138 power, 76% crit, 100% critical damage bonus, and 71.5 attack speed. Um, it also will have 10 life steal, um, and it will have relatively four penetration. Um, penetration does have a positive relationship with this character, um, but I feel that you do so much damage already that pin is kind of a, a waste on the character. Now, my early game items are one Whirling Wand with all one points in it, um, and I put all one point power, and then a Wind Carver Blade that has all one point power as well. And then I start building into the main build, whether it be my uh, Whirling Wand or my Wind Carver Blade. Whatever is the attack speed and power for the first 37 uh, CP, then I start building into crit. Um, I decided to transition a little bit earlier in this game, um, just because uh, the I, I had modified the build to test something out, um, and it didn't work as well as the build that I'm describing. But it, I mean, it still worked. So it, uh, you can see the the damage output. Um, lastly, I wanted to talk about Wukong as a as a hero. Wukong is not a tank. He is not a fighter. So if you're building um, tank stats like armor and whatnot on him. You're really you're you're really fighting the the kind of player that he is. You're fighting what it means to be Wukong. If you are uh, those guys that really feel like that's how you have to play him, you know I'm I, I'm this build's not really going to cater to you, and I'm sorry for that. But because he is a, a melee carry, um, I highly recommend you putting him in the jungle so that he has the ability to roam freely and uh, farm freely so that he can get ahead fairly quickly. If um, you are one of those offlaner guys, I am going to recommend you guys grabbing his um, defensive offensive switch and then grabbing his cloud walk first because your cloud walk is what's going to keep you um, alive in the offlane um, nine times out of ten. Um, but because he is a niche character and he is a niche jungler, don't pick him into a revenant um, a revenant root or a revenant stun because you're really going to pay with dearly with your life because you are a squishy melee carry. That's really uh, all I got for you guys today on this build. Um, I am going to uh, post the tower, um, the tower kills, the minion kills, um, as well as my KDA in this match, just so you can see how effective the build is. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. Um, if you like the build, um, try it out, uh, comment, let me know, and uh, I want to hear those those wonder stories, how it helped you, how great it was. If uh, you didn't like the build and you modified it and you made it better, let me know. I want to try those out too because there's no, there's no right way to build a character, but there is a way to structure your guys' characters in a way um, to bring it about the, the desired outcome. So with that being said, that's all I got for you. Um, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. You guys have a blessed day. Peace.